That's right, and to ensure our children continue to be beacons on the hill, the Education Ministry will be putting specific plans in motion. Those details later in the show. Also in the package, we talk comics and explore how agriculture can be used as a peace-building initiative. I'm Adrian Atkinson. We'll get the ball rolling in a few. If you're gonna take it to the limit, don't fake it, just make it the best and best. Can Are you 35? Live in Jamaica? Made a worthwhile contribution to the development of your community or parish? You're eligible for the Governor General's Achievement Award. There is also an award for persons 18 to 24 years with high levels of academic achievement. And if you're 24 to 35 years, you could qualify for the Governor General's Award of Excellence. It's not based on your personal success. It's based on your outreach, you know, doing something to, to help other people. For full details of the criteria, application form, and supporting documents, visit kingshouse.gov.jm or call 927-6424. Drop off documents at King's House, Hope Road, Kingston 6, or give them to the Justice of the Peace or Custis in your parish. Application deadline May 30, 2014. The Governor General's Achievement Awards Program, recognizing excellence since 1991. Good day, I'm Samantha Allen, and this is your GIS News for Friday, May 16. The Planning Institute of Jamaica PIOJ is estimating that Jamaica's economy grew by 1.6% in the first three months of this calendar year. It's the third consecutive quarter of growth and reflects 5.6% growth in the goods producing industry and 0.3% growth in the services industry. PIOJ is also estimating 0.9% growth in real GDP for the 2013-2014 financial year and says the short-term prospects for the Jamaican economy are positive. We expect a real GDP for the April to June 2014 quarter to grow within the range of 0.5% to 1.5%. The change in real GDP for fiscal year 2014-15 is projected to fall within the range of 1% to 2% with upside potential associated with the implementation of several growth inducing projects in tourism, energy, and uh, infrastructure. The PIOJ's Director General also revealed that Jamaica's unemployment rate continued to fall, dipping by 1.1% in January 2014 compared to the same month last year. The employed labor force also increased by 20,500 to a little over 1.13 million people, the highest level of employed persons recorded in five years. The Department of Correctional Services, DCS, has completed the data system to facilitate the operation of the Sex Offenders Registry. Through its regional offices, previous sex offenders will be monitored and additional resources are to come on stream so that the database can be linked to the central registry in the corporate area. During the first quarter of this fiscal year, a meeting will be held to sensitize the stakeholders, including the courts, DCS and the JCF about their roles and responsibilities. Meanwhile, the DCS is working with the Ministries of Health and Justice to develop a plan to better care for mentally ill inmates. At the end of the process, through the Community Mental Health Program, mentally ill inmates are to be placed in more appropriate therapeutic settings. Transport Minister Dr. Omar Davies says government will be meeting with potential investors to outline its objectives for the privatization of the Jamaica Railway Corporation. He says investment talks are proceeding with the enterprise team managing the process and two companies that are interested in a public-private partnership for the operation and management of the railway. Simultaneously, the GOJ is also in the process of conducting pre-market due diligence for sections of the railway that are deemed commercially viable. 
While delivering his sectoral presentation Wednesday, Dr. Davies said due diligence work was to determine the value in breaking up the JRC's assets if government could not identify a suitable partner to restore the entire rail network. In the meantime, the Transport Minister said a third entity had expressed interest and was asked to provide evidence of its ability to invest in the entity. Work is far advanced to upgrade the Caribbean Maritime Institute CMI to a specialized university catering to maritime intermodal transportation and logistics. Minister Omar Davies said the plan is for CMI to play a more critical role in the country's economic future. And when we speak about training for the growth agenda, this institution is going to play a critical role in terms of producing qualified professionals to support the growth agenda. CMI will continue offering global certification that meets and surpasses international standards and its student population is projected to grow to more than 4,000 in the next two years. Government is hoping to trigger more climate change awareness with its selection of the Portmore Climate Change Park as this year's National Labor Day project. Chairman of the National Labor Day Planning Committee, Delia Harris, says the four-year project by the Portmore Municipality and the German city of Hagen is a real symbol of the government's commitment to ensuring environmental sustainability. Some of the things that we hope over the four years is that there will be installations of an amphitheater, um, Activity will happen at this part. There will be an area for the indigenous animals of Portmore and so on. She says Labor Day activities at the site will be concentrated on the perimeter of the park, which is located in the Portmore town centre. We will be planting 100 trees and we'll be installing approximately nine solar floodlights and we'll be putting in um, five park benches. Fourteen police stations, meanwhile, have been selected as parish projects this year, but notwithstanding those, communities are encouraged to identify projects of their choice and get to work on Labor Day. The Thanksgiving service for Workers' Week and Labor Day will be held this Sunday, May 18. And finally, students on their way to school this morning enjoyed celebratory activities hosted by the National Child Month Committee to commemorate the third annual National Children's Day. The youngsters were given an I am special stickers and treated with tokens. It is indeed a great day for us. We are truly, truly, truly excited that we have this opportunity to move around, to hug our children, to give them something, to tell them that they are special and indeed to make them feel special. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Samantha Allen. Thanks for watching. How well do you know your child? what he or she likes or dislikes, favorite food or color. How about who their friends are? Make the time, get to know your child, it helps to build their relationship. Makes it easy to keep them safe and it helps their development process. Twenty fourteen has been declared the year of student achievement. As such, the Education Ministry will continue pursuing several strategies to ensure the nation's children become high achievers. Details from the Minister himself. The future of this country rests on effective education, we say again, and by that we mean passing subjects, acquiring skills, listen, and developing character. Not one not two, but always all three. The best way to balance people's lives is to give them the opportunity for a sound education. Creating this holistic change starts with the little ones. And that's why the 2014 to 2015 fiscal period has been dubbed the year of student achievement. The decision to spend every dollar this year will be made on the basis of how much value it adds and how much it promotes student achievement. In the most difficult of times, in the most difficult of times, almost $80 billion has been devoted to education this year. 14.1 billion dollars has been allocated to meet the needs of infant to grade 3 students. This is in addition to the 316.5 million that will be spent on supporting and improving early childhood education. Come 2015-2016, 
2017, there will be a new national primary curriculum which will see, among other things, the removal of GSAT as the exit exam for primary school students. The new curriculum is well underway, you know, Mr. Speaker. And what we want to do is to ensure that we don't pile on so much content that people don't understand the meaning of what they learn. New curriculum must set a premium on higher order skills such as reasoning, analysis and mastery of a range of literacies. Good news! The country is on track to achieve the target of 100% mastery in literacy at the primary level by 2015, with our girls leading the way. But to achieve overall improvement, a number of interventions have been put forward. The National Literacy Team, with assistance from the United States Agency for International Development, to whom we are indebted, is providing direct support to 450 primary schools across the island through the deployment of 90 reading coaches at grades 1 to 3. Twelve other literacy specialists have also been assigned to 48 secondary schools to support the teaching of English at grades 7 to 9. There are some changes in the area of numeracy. The target date set for students to achieve 85% mastery in mathematics at grade 4 has been adjusted to 2018 instead of 2015. Meanwhile, restructuring of the National Mathematics Program is underway to ensure student performance in the area significantly improves. This year, the Ministry of Education has allocated an additional $390 million to expand the mathematics program. 146 math coaches will be deployed in primary and secondary schools this September. Starting this September, the Ministry of Education will expand the breakfast program to provide free breakfast and lunches to 70% of students. That's a total of 138,000 children. The remaining 30% will have the option to make a contribution or pay in full. The work continues to ensure our students have a comfortable and conducive environment for learning. Major infrastructure developments to take place this year include integrating 200 early childhood institutions into the infant departments of primary schools and the construction of standalone infant schools. Ten early childhood institutions will also be repaired while more classroom spaces will be added to 40 high schools. There is also a major drive to eliminate pit latrines in schools by 2015. And this year, through public-private partnerships, 94 flush toilets will be installed at a cost of $168 million. We'll be engaging the services of 200 trained teachers through Jeep, as well as 40 others who will provide coaching and teaching support to 480 of the early childhood institutions. Subsidy support to early childhood practitioners most of whom are privately employed, will increase by 15% this year. And the Ministry of Finance has committed to pay all verified arrears owed to the educators by the end of August, as agreed with the Jamaica Teachers Association. For the first time, all book lists that schools issue to parents will be approved by the Ministry of Education. We're giving some guidelines. Parents should not be spending more than an average of $5,000 on supplementary texts at the primary level and about $12,000 at the grade 7 to 9 levels at the secondary schools. And over $900 million has been allocated to the textbook program, but the textbook loan cycle has been adjusted from 3 to 5 years for some and from 5 to 7 years for other texts, saving the administration over $88 million. Other new commitments this fiscal year include the provision of an additional $2,000 towards the auxiliary fees of PATH beneficiaries, the creation of 20 pull-out classrooms designed for children with special education needs, the development of a teacher's job match web portal linking teachers seeking jobs with potential employers locally and overseas, the provision of community skills training at a cost of $317 million, and educational broadcasting on several cable TV providers to supplement classroom instruction. 
the Ministry of Education on a mission to create high achievement among all students in 2014 and beyond. This is a good time for education in Jamaica. Look what we have going for us. The nation realizes as never before that there will be no personal satisfaction nor any growth agenda unless we become a knowledge-based society undergirded by sound education. We are trying to do more with what we have to advance student achievement. Come touch me not, touch a button not. I don't want to tell the boys and girls at school when I'm going at them on this way. But remember the rules. Come from 1 to 10, if that's too short, you can always count to 100. Plus, you can always ignore the ask of them. If it get too intense, tell the teacher no? And if they don't want to listen, go to your parents or the police. You don't have to follow the bad things that everybody's doing. That means stop school class. The copy of the next book. When me are the only man with pants for waist, me not follow nobody. So two things we're going to do as youngsters. We're going to keep the peace in school and we're going to keep it clean. You see me? I'm Josh. Stay cool and keep it positive. Straight. Play is very important to the development of children. It allows them to use their creativity and develop their imagination. Through play, children interact with the world around them. They learn how to work in groups, share and resolve conflicts. They learn rules and they learn about respecting others and waiting turns and setting their own rules and, and guidelines for their game. Set limits, but allow your children to play. It will help them develop the confidence and resilience needed to conquer future challenges. Multi-billion dollar enterprises like Batman, Spider-Man and the Avengers have their origin in comics. It's no Fenke Fenke business after all. And Jamaica is seeking to tap into the lucrative sector. Are you imaginative, have a story to tell, or maybe you draw well? If you have any of these skills, today's arts page is for you. This week we take a look at the comic industry. For centuries, comics have been utilized as not only an artistic expression, but also to illustrate the length and breadth of the human experience and imagination. That reality has not been lost on Jamaican artists who are also using this medium to express their views. Just open the island's daily newspapers, watch Cabby Chronicles, or view works done by students of the Edna Manley College. The Jamaican anime and comic scene is a burgeoning industry. To foster growth in the comic sector, the University of Technology recently partnered with the Jamaican Animation Nation Network, JAN, to stage a two-day workshop. Under the theme Blacks in Comics, the Creators and Characters, the workshop saw acclaimed African-American writer and comic book creator Alex Simmons speaking to children and adults about the importance of the industry. Held at UTech Center for the Arts, day one of the comic workshop witnessed Simmons giving a hands-on comic creating session with a select number of primary school students where we're going to see what they have in their heads, what kind of characters and images and fun things they want to create, what kind of stories they want to tell, and show them how we do it in the comic book industry and then how they can do it here on their own. While most of the children were novices, some were quite knowledgeable about the subject area, and they got a chance to put pencil to paper and to see their imaginations come alive. 
All children should have an opportunity to have arts in their lives, to create their own images, their own stories, their own characters, all of that. And the children who turned up had high praises for the workshop. So I came here to learn more so that if I'm not successful in academics, I have art to back up my future. It's been very fun because I've learned a lot of things and like these things will guide me so that when I'm bigger and my art can be published, I know what to do. I am here to learn about comics and so far I like it. I hope to, that I can turn an artist. Their parents weren't too far behind. My son, he produces two comics, um, The Adventures of Radish and Carrot and also The Adventures of Apple and Banana. Oh, apple and Mango, sorry. I think he'd benefit a lot from this workshop. My nine-year-old daughter, she has a special knack for drawing and a special interest in art. Held during Black History Month, the comic workshop also gave the children the chance to see positive representations of black culture and people for them to emulate. Black history is about us becoming more aware of our positive achievements and realizing our potential as opposed to looking at and, and living on some of the negativities that we are constantly being fed. The history of blacks in comics was the focus of day two of the comic workshop. Comic book creators and enthusiasts ventured to lecture Theatre 23 on the university campus to hear Simon speak of his experience as a person of color in the comic industry. Here was my opportunity to take things that I had grown up seeing that were twisted and pull it back into alignment a bit, to do my piece, to do my bit. The local industry left with some insight into the sector and ways to make a greater impact on the global scene. The interest in Jamaica is amazing for animation and for comics as well. What has happened is that we have a lot of creative people with energy that they don't know where to put it. And hopefully, with us partnering with UTEC, with JamPro, and with other organizations, we can bring more of this to the forefront and open people's eyes to the realization of what animation and what the creative arts can do for Jamaica. I hope, like myself, you are inspired to use your imagination and tell your story through comics. Until next time, this has been The Arts Page. My name is Adrian Carly, double silver medalist in primary school champs, and you're watching Jamaica Magazine. It can be argued that education will help to curtail the country's crime problem. Earlier this week, the National Security Minister outlined plans under the Unite for Change campaign. Communities in Manchester have heeded the call and are ahead of the game. Take a look. I learned that crops can grow in different ways. It can grow without soil and it can grow without spraying it. I've learned a lot because if you're on the mine outland and you plant things, I can lose it. But then if you have the hydroponic machine, at least you can make more money out of it. I would encourage others to be a part of it because I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good program. It's just something to um, let you have something to do instead of sitting around or don't have nothing to do. You can just have something occupying your time and helping you. The positive responses of three of 16 participants in a farming project spanning six Manchester communities. On February 28, the beneficiaries, other community members, government and private partners gathered to officially launch the project, the latest initiative of the Manchester Dispute Resolution and Violence Prevention Association. What we're looking for you to be is a model of the sort of behavior um, that we are hoping to encourage right across and that you have a special responsibility now having been chosen 
um, in this way to carry the message out into the farm, out into the field, out into the community and that you'll be ambassadors um, for violence prevention as the weeks, months and years uh, pass. National Security Minister Peter Bunting offering his charge to participants. He also endorsed that and other initiatives of the association, commenting that they fit seamlessly into the current Unite for Change initiative of his ministry. Under the project that's valued at $300,000, the farmers are receiving training in sustainable farming practices, accessing equipment to carry out their work, and getting cash grants to purchase farm material. We have been involved in agricultural research. We have done a number of research on the mined out bauxite land. We have also worked alongside with a number of farmers in greenhouse technology, in um, a number of um, crops, and we have done a number of studies on the soil. Agricultural projects are very important, especially in the rural section of the country, because when the youngsters, when they are, are not employed or they are not occupied, then they utilize the energy in other things. In this latest project, the association partnered with organizations like the Northern Caribbean University, NCU, and the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA. And just like this thriving pumpkin farm owned by one of the participants, the association has been seeing positive results even before its official launch in 2012. There are over 150 community members who were trained as first responders in cases of domestic violence were presented with certificates. In addition, we have had parent, parenting seminars. We have had also um, young father seminars youth empowerment training and we are currently looking on a contract to provide education for some of our young people. Students from five high schools in the parish will benefit from e-learning material in mathematics, biology, chemistry and geography. It's all in an effort to influence positive behaviors, thereby reducing the incidences of crime and violence in the parish. And inspired by the 50% reduction in crime in that part of the island, there are plans to encourage other parishes to follow suit. We are currently working on the policy that will guide the association and we hope to roll out that policy so that the minister can present that in parliament as it becomes the official document that will guide this kind of initiative. We believe that we have to play our part. Volunteerism is important and we need to restore civic pride where we get our, young, our people to believe in ourselves. I also encourage the youth in this program because it is a great program for the country and for a better society. I thank them very much because I have learned a lot. Thank them for the experience and I appreciate it very much. And we won't let them down. Uniting to change lives one at a time, members of the Manchester Dispute Resolution and Violence Prevention Association are playing their part. It's up to each of us as Jamaicans to play ours. Sometimes, even the greatest joys bring challenge, and the children with special needs inspire a very, very special love. That's a wrap on this Friday's edition of Jamaica Magazine. But you may stay in touch with us 24-7. Visit our website, jis.gov.jm, or follow us on Twitter at JIS News. You may also share your thoughts via email, jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. I'm Adrian Atkinson, and this has been Jamaica Magazine. Another program comes your way tomorrow. Until then, do take care, and thanks for watching.
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.